Yo, what's going on guys? It is Tom Archie and we are back with another match reaction, I guess. Um, first of all, obviously before we get into anything of today's events at Charlton, um, obviously my thoughts and prayers go out to Tom Lockyer, who obviously collapsed in today's game with Bournemouth and Luton. So, fingers crossed, all, all is well with him. And hopefully, obviously, he makes a speedy recovery. Now, obviously, as I'm sure you guys are aware, this 25-day video thing kind of failed. Um, I did underestimate <laughs> how much and uh, how much work that would take. So, we'll probably do something like that in the future again. But for now, it's just a bit... Um, for now, it's just a bit... A lot, you know, it's a lot for a small channel, um, but yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying my content. Obviously, uh, we are closing in on 900 subscribers, we are so close, which is insane. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys obviously do enjoy. If this is your first time seeing my face, obviously, press that subscribe button, uh, and yeah, let's get into the video. But so, if we start off with the lineups, Charlton, um, well. Only a chance lineup, of course. Um, obviously, we started with a brewing goal. Tenno Watson, Hector, Terrell Thomas, Eden, Chem Campbell, George Dobson, Scott Fraser, Tedich, Alfie May, and Corey Blacker Taylor in a 4 3 3 formation. Uh, with obviously Chem playing as the number 10. When I first saw the lineup, um, I will admit it was a very interesting lineup to say the least. Um, hang on. Don't. When I first saw the lineup, it was as I expected. I'll be honest. Apart from maybe Carnu or Louis Watson starting, maybe. Um, I thought Carnu proved himself last week against Cambridge. Made a good impact. Um, I've I, I I did watch the game back in the end and I saw that he played really well. Um, I don't know. I mean. Obviously, we know how Ted Itch has done so far, which, and I'm probably going to get a stick for this, but I do feel sorry for him because he it is it's clear the man's got no confidence, um, and somehow needs to find it um, to score goals. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he did get recalled, and we brought someone else in. I have no idea though, but obviously we'll soon see. Um, but as I said, starting the game started brightly. Uh, from what I saw anyway um, and then it got to about the 24th minute where the goals started to come now this is <laughs> something I, I I feel like I say every bloody video League One referee and, or EFL officiating is quite possibly the worst refereeing in football, <laughs> I'll be honest. Um, I'll put a picture somewhere around here of the incident that led to the goal. Now, I'll put it somewhere obviously around here, and then the ref. <laughs> now, it's very, very clear on the camera. Uh, the line I should have seen as well that the ball was over the line it was very very clear the whole ball was over the line um, I will admit that we should probably just play to the whistle anyway because um, that's what I've been taught since I was young anyway however um, the ball did go out <laughs> and obviously every, every player thought that even the, even the Barnsley player stopped. Um, and they've gone and scored from it. Which is crazy to me. Because it seems every single week, without fail, at a child game, there is some sort of a refereeing incident. Now, obviously, Ash and Appleton both saw it. Both went to speak to the referee. Both got carded for it, for speaking their opinion. 
but when the ref says something you can't speak back is it's it is it, silly um and needs to be sorted out quickly because it's becoming a, th- a common theme in the football league and we doesn't and we don't need that um but yeah from then not much really happened there was a few yellow cards few, i mean obviously tons of bloody yellow cards in this game um however the stats for the entire game um we had 18 no they they had 18 shots and five on target we had 15 shots and three on target which could you you could potentially say to both teams that you could be more clinical sort of thing um expected goals for Barnsley 1.21 and ours 0.95 now it doesn't really help us a lot really anyway however um besides the uh second half fairly better sort of thing um not again not much really happened as few a few yellow cards um a few subs uh obviously our first change was daniel Carnu coming on for tedich in the 63rd minute uh they obviously had a few cards before then we had a few cards terrell thomas Scott Fraser, um, and then Corey Blackett Taylor. Um, I will try to find the clip of the goal. Um, if not, I'm sure it's somewhere on the uh, Twitter. But he got fed a ball. I'm not sure who, who by. I'm still trying to think. Uh, but it went over. I think it might have touched Chem on the way. Took the ball, ran into the box, full speed. I mean. From what I've heard, again, he did that a fair few times during the uh, game and smashed it home, which was a very, very good goal. It was it was actually a very, very good goal. Um, and to any Charlton fans <laughs> who are watching this and saying that he should go in January and that he is easily replaceable, take a look at that. Now, I'll put another picture on the screen in a minute of what him and Alfie may have done this season alone <laughs> which is insane they've scored I think it's what I think it's like a three quarters or a quarter of um the goals in league one which is insane <laughs> um for a team that is sat 12th I think if I'm not mistaken is it is around mid table I know that for a fact um, so yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of fans say, we might as well cash in, we might as well do this, we might as well do that. Make the bloody most of the players, <laughs> because there's, it's not often the Charlton side have players as great as this. <laughs> um, Alfie May could have chosen a Gillingham side. Alfie May could have chosen a higher side in... The championship, for for example, he could have done anything and not signed for us. And then Charlton fans would obviously, well, I mean, I'm not obviously criticising. I know we've been through a hard time. Obviously, was that 10th? My mistake. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, it's, it's, it's just annoying to see. I Again, I know, before people get into me, um, that we have been through a lot of pain and suffering in the last couple of years. Or decade, um, and fans expect the bare minimum from the players, which h- h- half the time, no, most of the time, a lot of them do. But then, obviously, as we've said in previous videos, there is a number of players who could not give a damn <laughs> about anyone apart from themselves. Um, which Appleton has said there will be a lot of changes in January. Which I'm really hoping so there is, because we need some more fresh faces. We need faces that are gonna push us up the league. We need faces that are gonna help us, maybe potentially move on to a playoff push in the in the second half of the season. Whether that happens is a different question. Um, so yeah, after Corey's goal, not much really happened. Uh, made a few subs. Probably sh- maybe could have scored at the end. But the ref, I know I've said this already in the video, but the ref 
e e EFL League One. If if any anyone's watching this from that e part of football, please, for the love of God, sort your refereeing out. Sort your officials out. Try and put them through more tests because some of them are insane. Because I looked at some of the ref stats before the game. I always do, and some of the decisions <laughs> are insane. Some of the cards, some of the fouls, some of the reasons for it is, is mental. But obviously moving on, um, we we now sit 10th in League One. Obanzi sits 7th. Uh, we are 11 points. Nope, 9, 10, nope. <laughs> 11 points from the playoffs. Um, my maths isn't that great, clearly. Um, and we are obviously 7 points from... Uh, no, yeah, we're 7 or 8 points from Bully Barnsley. And my maths is great. It's, it's horrible, but try and do that to me. Um, so Mid-table, 10th. Um, and honestly, it's 3 points from us and Port Vale on 15th. So literally anything can change. In the next thing, um, obviously we bought a few players on. We bought Carnu on and Bick and Tyrese Campbell. Now I reckon personally Tyrese came on a bit too late. I know there's been a few people who have criticised him recently, and fair enough because he's obviously not played really well. Um, but I do think maybe bringing him on and placing Alf as the number ten potentially and putting Khan up front could maybe be something we use for Barca next week I don't know but it's it's something I said at the start of the season on the live stream there'll probably be one soon I don't want to overload our team with youngsters from our academy now I know we probably have the best one of them in the country, the best academy in the country. Now, obviously we've got Casey, we've got Bick, we've got Carnu, we've got Ryla, but I think sometimes we get too excited with some of the players and we kind of want them in the team, but then they, but then they sometimes aren't ready. They they will be ready soon, obviously, clearly, but. It's just a thing of I don't want to rush and have too many inexperienced players in the lineup. Um, I know there'll be a, a few comments about that probably, but it is what it is. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a bit of a crazy one. Charlton obviously go through a lot of pain and suffering every bloody year. It's a lot of rebuilding, but what I will say, this may be unpopular, but. The manager is not the issue, the players are not the issue, and the owners are not the issue. This is just a rebuilding job. This may be very unpopular. However, um, I just feel like maybe, just maybe, this is a slowly rebuilding job. And we're slowly getting our charm back s sort of thing. I know sitting in mid-table in League One, it's very easy to say that. However, I just feel like maybe there is a plan set in place, but obviously it's not going to... We're not going to become the old Premier League Charlton side overnight. We're not going to become the championship side overnight. We It's obviously going to take time. Um, obviously, we are a bit better this season. We've got a goal threat, which is something we've not had since Lyle Taylor, really. <laughs> Lyle Taylor or even... Kermigan and Wright Phillips. Those are the ones that I can think of off the top of my head that have actually blown us away sort of thing as strikers, attacking force, things like that. But yeah, anyways, I'm going to leave it here because um, I've kind of ranted on a bit too much. Um, so yeah, obviously leave your comment, your thoughts down below of the game. Uh, my thoughts are, I'll take a point. It's a good point against a good Barnsley side. However, we need to be picking up points against teams that we should be beating. Obviously, no disrespect to anyone in League One. They're all decent sides. But 
teams like I'm gonna get clipped for this, but <laughs> Carlisle, Cambridge, Cheltenham. Obviously, we beat K K Cheltenham, but obviously we need to be picking up more points, especially at home as well. Um, we've got Burton next week. Potentially could be there. No idea <laughs> yet. However, we will uh, sort something out about that. If not, uh, there'll be a, f a couple more videos this week anyway. But yeah, um, I'll take a point. But we knew, do need to um, be picking up points against teams like Burton, teams like Carlisle. Even teams at the top we need to be picking up if we want to somewhat challenge. So yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed. As I said, we are so, so close to 900 subscribers. So if this is the first time seeing my face, make sure you press that big red subscribe button. And let's try and hit 10 likes in this video. And I will see you guys in another video at the in, in this week at some point. But until then... See you guys in a bit.